I've got a round column mill here. It happens to be a Grizzly, but it's pretty identical to most of the other brands, I guess. And as you all know, especially if you have one of these, uh, a lot of these never came with DROs of any kind. And you can put a DRO on them. I have one here. Um, works real well, but this is a two-axis. I didn't go with a three-axis because I didn't know for sure how the hell I could mount it on here without it being in the way and all of the cables and things. So I came up with a different idea for mounting a DRO on the Z-axis. And I thought I'd share with you today how I went about doing that and the particular one that I chose. So maybe this will be helpful to you and maybe it'll give you some ideas about how you could do one if you have one of these particular mills yourself. So the first thing that was required uh, was to make this bracket right here, which I just did out of a piece of aluminum scrap that I had. You could do this with a piece of aluminum angle or any other you know, similar configuration, I'm sure. Um, what I had to do was I had to take this collar off here, uh, which I have not removed for the purpose of the video because I got it back on there and it's sort of a pain to get it off and back on. So I didn't bother. But I think you can see as I get down under here, you can see how I've configured that. Um, I sort of traced around working parts and so on roughly cut them out and I tapped and drilled this collar and uh, mounted this bracket to the underside of it. Now it won't interfere with anything because it doesn't even drop as low as this adjustment, this height adjustment here, or the stop rather, and it's below the tip of the quill. So that shouldn't be an issue. Uh, that was something I wanted to make sure I avoided. So there's the first part. The next thing will be, um, to mount the DRO, or that is the scale of the DRO right here, and then we're going to mount uh, the readout itself here. After I got this piece fitted to that collar over there on the mill, I took it off, and you can see it's quite crude back here. I just roughed this out on a high-speed bandsaw. Um, I suppose it would have been more work than like to make this much neater, but it does not show, so I was willing to go pretty quick. Um, I did mill these two slots so that I could make this piece adjustable back and forth on the mill just a little bit. Uh, that's more convenience um, when it comes to mounting this than anything else. And I've clamped the part to an angle block here so that I could drill these two holes. And I just did that, you know, a little layout blue on here, die chem. And I just, I clamped this piece that is the DRO beam or the scale, I should say. I clamped the scale on here and spotted the first hole and then clamped it back on, pinned it, spotted the second hole and drilled it uh, so that everything is going to fit nicely. Now, the supplied hardware with this DRO, which is this bunch of stuff here, is not compatible with what I'm doing. So, you know, you may have to find some small hardware to do this job with. And everything is sized in accordance with the diameter of the pre-drilled holes in this scale. So that's going to go on there. I think these are 832 or something like that. I'm not sure. It doesn't really matter. So I'll screw this down on here and make sure that I square this up when I solidify all of that down. So my next step was to make this bracket, which was the most frustrating part of the whole thing. If I put this background behind it, you can see it a little bit better. Uh, this is the only metal component that they supplied with this uh, that I used from the whole bunch of stuff. They, they send you quite a variety of brackets and things. You know, they can't anticipate what your needs are, but they do the best they can. So I was able to use this. It just saved me the time of fabricating it from raw. But I had to make this particular bend to fit the cowling that's around the, the quill area which I'll show you in the next segment. But um, there really was no measuring involved in this. I, I had to mount uh, the DRO essentially and then kind of bend my way through this and feel my way through. There was, I don't think there was anything arithmetic that I could do to predetermine just what that bend needed to be. But uh, we made it. So I remounted the DRO back onto the quill 
after I bent this bracket, which as you can see is now hidden. So to get that bracket screwed to the cowling, um, I just brought the quill down to expose that and lock that in position. I drilled a couple of eighth inch holes there and these happen to be, I think these are number 440 machine screws. Uh, weirdly, to get those screws through there was no problem, but to get a nut on the other side of them was a challenge. I did not tap these holes in here uh, because I have no confidence in this polymer uh, to hold those threads, even if I cut them in there. So I used a 440 nut, and to get it back in there and hold it in the right position, I just wrapped some masking tape around my finger and held it back in there. Took a little bit of, you know, feeling around, but what the hell, I'm from the 60s. I remember the drive-in movies. So there's the mounting, and it seems just fine. I have not done any terrific testing yet, but everything is working smoothly. So there's the completed installation. Um, it's all done, and it's working very, very well. I found that the thing that I worried about the most or was most concerned about, I guess, was getting the scale perfectly vertical and making sure that it was vertical in all directions so that there's no binding on the readout itself. But that's pretty easy to accomplish. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with this. I think the installation probably took me eh, two and a half, three hours, but that's because uh, more because I tend to take pieces and parts and piece them together and hold them up and, and look and kind of calculate my way through. I, I don't sit down and draw this stuff out too well. So this was just my way of going about it. So I thought I'd do a test with this thing and find out just how accurate we can be. Um, I have my readout turned on, of course, and it's zeroed. Um, that's my starting point. I have mounted an edge finder in a collet, and I've placed in the vise here. I've rigged up a brown and sharp test indicator that's uh, focused on the end of that edge finder, and that should tell us where we are. And I have kind of tweaked that. I have zeroed the test indicator. So back over here, let's move down a thousandth of an inch. And see what happens. And it appears, as you can see there, we have not moved a thousandth, we've moved three thousandths of an inch. Now, for machining purposes, serious machining, where you've got to mill or uh, counter bore possibly to a very, very specific depth, that certainly is not acceptable. But for 99.5% of my needs, this is super accurate, um, or I should say accurate enough, and especially when compared to trying to use these dials. The dials on these things are about as useful as nipples on a 2x4. So even though this is not a perfect system by any means, I think it's going to keep me in the neighborhood that I want to be in. And it's a lot better than milling to a depth and then measuring with depth micrometers or whatever means you happen to have available. So not perfect, but I think we're in the neighborhood. So lastly, I just want to comment that I'm not subsidized by any of these people and I'm not advertising or advocating for any of them. You've clearly seen in the video that this is the eye gauging uh, drill press readout. Um, I chose it for the milling machine readout for a very specific reason. And that was that it was easy to get this scale mounted in this position. I didn't have to have it somewhere else uh, where it's farther away and therefore harder to, to keep it working. Um, it does not interfere with the quill lock. There are other readouts. I happen to have two of these. Um, this is a, an Amazon special here. Um, and these work very, very well. I've got one on my planer and it's just excellent. But as you can see, the scale is so long that I couldn't find a convenient way, at least I couldn't come up with a convenient way to mount it on there. And that's why I chose this particular brand.
I'm Kevin Ledoux at Ledoux Guitars, also known as the Pragmatic Luthier, for those of you who have not seen me before. I'd appreciate it if you'd put a like on this video and maybe you subscribe to my channel. Thanks an awful lot.